So recently, we got the news that Percy Jackson and the Olympians, which was released on Disney Plus throughout December 2023 and January of this year, was getting greenlit for a second season. And I was pretty thrilled with this news. Overall, I think the show itself was very good, had some shaky moments maybe, but overall, very good adaptation that did well on Disney Plus and thus renewed for that second season. And yeah, I think they're going to go all in on this. They want to make this their big franchise of the 2020s, or at least one of them. But of course, that means season two is on the way at some point. And so today, I feel like we can go through what that season might potentially look like. What's going to make the cut, what they might add, what they might change, that sort of thing. So yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so we're dealing with season two, which means book two, which of course is Sea of Monsters. Now, this is where they really need to make sure that nothing goes off the rails. We've had a good first season. That season ended up doing very well and has been renewed. But let's wind back the clock, shall we? Because don't forget... Over a decade ago now, we had the release of the Lightning Thief movie. It didn't exactly set the box office on fire, but it did well enough to get renewed for a second film. And then the entire series fell off a cliff with the second one, Sea of Monsters. And we got no more new content, at least in terms of screen adaptations, for another 11 years after that. So they really did screw the pooch with it and killed the franchise for a long time. So they really got to focus on ensuring that they just don't screw everything up. I know that's really vague, but you know what I mean. Sea of Monsters, they basically took a quick glance at the book, they took some inspiration, but for the majority of the stuff they decided, eh, we're not doing that. And like, I get that not everything is going to make the cut, but jeez. <sighs> so yeah, let's go through the book and see what we think is going to be changed, what's probably going to stay the same, etc, etc. Okay, so for starters, just for a general edition, I have no idea where they're going to add these moments and whatnot, but I do guarantee that we're going to get some more original scenes with the gods, or have the gods appear in scenes that they were not originally in before. Particularly, I'm talking Athena. We've built up that tension in season one regarding the relationship between Annabeth and her mum, originally having it framed as a positive thing, then a distant one, and then finally, we have Athena sell her daughter down the river and allow the mother of monsters into her shrine to kill her. Well, at least that's certainly the implication. That since she's mad at Annabeth for not stopping Percy sending the head of Medusa to Olympus to make fools out of the gods, that she's better off being dead. Yeah. Pretty absurd, honestly. And now with Annabeth reconnecting with her dad in the off-season, I feel like you've got to strike while the iron's hot and follow up with that storyline as soon as you can. You don't want to end up introducing those kind of big story divergences and then just have them lead nowhere. That's just silly. And so I think they really do have to address it. On top of that, I'd expect that this season, Luke is going to be full steam ahead on trying to recruit and turn the heroes against the gods. I mean, he features quite heavily in the book, far more than he does in book one slash season one, and he plays more of a role of the main antagonist. In the book, he still does try to tempt them, don't get me wrong, to lure them over and stuff, but ultimately, he's just a crazy baddie. And so that's why I think you need to explore that athena Annabeth dynamic, because you're currently dealing with another fallen demigod who feels abandoned and ruined and used by his parent. On top of that, I also think they have to follow up with some Poseidon stuff. In the book, I'm pretty sure he doesn't really appear at all, but there needs to be something, some sort of follow-up here. He doesn't even have to appear personally, because I guess one could argue that Tyson, Percy's brother, and then also Blackjack, who I'm pretty sure is Percy's nephew, might be considered enough to be getting on with. And I guess you should be playing into Percy feeling disconnected from his dad. After all, he did just ditch him on Olympus. Feel abandoned, maybe? I feel like that might make a lot of sense. That they might play into the, oh shit, maybe my dad does kind of suck, sort of thing. Because I'm pretty sure that in the books, Tyson's been living in a cardboard box for years in the streets of New York. And that many other Cyclops, Poseidon's own children, his grandchildren and whatnot, they share that same fate. They're left with nothing and have to toughen up on their own. Like, that's absurdly dark. And I think it would be a weird element to his character if Percy just doesn't care or doesn't acknowledge this at all. Like, the show's gone pretty hard on some of the gods. And while so far Poseidon has come out of things looking largely okay, I do think that ultimately, Medusa's belief that he's a monster is going to bear some fruit before long. Anyway, I'm pretty sure Sea of Monsters is the shortest book in the series, so I do think they're going to need to add some more stuff in order to stretch that runtime and make it satisfying for audiences. By the time it releases, it'll been like two years or so since season one released. Although, maybe I'm just being pessimistic about a release date. But yeah, if it has been that long, and then you serve up a season that feels shorter by far, that's just a recipe for discontent amongst the fan base. Nobody wants that. Ugh. But that begs the question, what do they add? Maybe some more stuff with Sally? I mean, I don't really think she appears much in this book at all. They start off at the school, then they head straight to the camp after getting attacked, so I guess you'd probably want her to have at least a couple of scenes, right? Characters disappearing for seasons at a time? 
that's no good. She only needs to be in a few scenes like she was in season one, and you can still tell an adequate story there. Although I would say, don't do any more flashbacks of her and Percy. That ship sailed. We've seen what we need to see from that. But she does need to appear in some capacity. Hell, it might even be a good idea to check in with all our big three hero characters. You should show Grover getting kidnapped by Polyphemus. Is that how you say his name? But yeah, you see him getting kidnapped via Percy's dream in the book. But I think they should also cut back to him every now and again to show his ordeal. Maybe through some more dreams. I mean, Percy had a lot of dreams in season one. Why not keep it going? Make it a running theme throughout the show. On top of that, I think they really should be showing off what life is like for Annabeth back with her dad, right? I don't know, maybe through flashbacks, her talking about it, I don't know. I don't think you'd want to front load it all at the start of season two, because you want to get into the story, and you don't want to linger too hard. So yeah, maybe some Annabeth flashbacks would be worthwhile as well. And on top of that, you need some Annabeth, Luke, and Thalia flashbacks too. You need to show what happened, you need to explain why things happened, and all the different character dynamics between that trio. And if you include all of that sort of stuff, or even just some of that sort of stuff, you should be able to stretch the runtime to an adequate amount with all of those additions. As for the plot though, what makes the cut and what doesn't, hmm. well, judging by the way that the first season played out, I think I'd be pretty shocked if they were going to have any major cuts. I think there's going to be minor things that are changed here or there, but I'm not really certain any of the major scenes, locations, or plot points are going to be any different than they were before. Percy and Tyson are still going to begin their story at Percy's new school and get attacked by giants in a game of dodgeball, only to be saved by Annabeth, because that sequence of events sounds too funny. They're going to return to camp to find Thalia's tree has been poisoned, and the camp is in shambles. Although I do wonder, are they going to bother with Tantalus? Are they going to bother having Chiron be fired for being Kronos' son and thus a suspect in the tree poisoning because, uh, I don't know. It's a rather small part of the overall story being told, and Tantalus is such a minor character. I think he disappears and he's never back again. Although on the other side of things, having the gods actively screwing over Chiron, a character that we know and who Percy likes, is something that makes a lot of sense. And then there's also Thalia's tree. Are we going to have full evil Luke who straight up tries to kill his friend? Or do we think there's going to be a little bit more nuance behind his decision to do what he does? I hope there is, because otherwise, well, he was very compelling in the finale when he looked so conflicted and upset about how it was all playing out. So, you know, they probably want to keep going down that path. I'm not saying that poisoning the tree would be out of character, but they need to go more in depth on the reasoning and the darker path he's walking down. I think the number one priority really needs to be keeping him from becoming the two-dimensional cartoon villain that he ended up as in the books. People love grey characters. And I think the best way to handle this fall from grace is to see him slowly losing himself more and more every single season. You can't push too hard too early or you're going to lose that effect. Anyway, at camp, Percy discovers that Tyson's his brother and a cyclops at that, which embarrasses him and gets him teased. They should cut this out. I think it feels out of character for who Percy is. I just don't see him getting embarrassed and wanting to ditch Tyson. Instead, I think they need to use Tyson as a lens through which Percy can see his father's faults in how many of his children were just straight up abandoned, much like Ares said. It would be a far more interesting storyline, and I guess I always figured that Percy wouldn't be the type of person to buy into that sort of thing, considering his strong stance against bullying when he stands up for those he cares about, like Grover in the first season. Yeah, he doesn't really reject him truly in the book, but it's clear that he is not all that enamored with him for the majority of the story. Like, I just want the brotherly bond, damn it. However, they should keep Annabeth's dislike of the Cyclops. Just adds a bit of drama to the season, and to me, it was a really interesting character flaw for her to hate this guy for existing, even if he is the sweetest, kindest, gentlest character in the tale. Calorius then gets sent off on a quest to find the Golden Fleece to save Thalia's tree and thus save the camp, and Hermes turns up and asks Percy to go along with Tyson and Annabeth on that quest as well. Which, yeah, I hope they add a bit more to this scene. We've met Hermes now in the show already, he's been developed a bit, and so I think they're going to keep diving more and more into Luke and Hermes' dynamic, but through dialogue, so we don't actually ever really see it. You only get hints of what might be true, because they both have a different account. And I suspect that's going to be one of the big running plot points throughout the show. And that they're really going to flesh it out more and more. And you've got to start here. You have a spot ready made for them to cram some more stuff in. So capitalize on that as soon as you can. They then go on the quest. They meet Luke on his ship. All good so far. They get attacked by a Hydra. All good so far. Keep that. They get saved by Clarice and her crew of undead confederate soldiers. Yeah. Somehow I doubt that those guys are making the cut. I feel like they'll just use generic undead sailors because I do not see Disney flying with confederates as being 
the good guys. Even if, you know, the story acknowledges that they're the bad guys, they're still helping the good guys. So, nope. They then get attacked again. Annabeth and Percy watch up on Cersei's island where Percy's turned into a guinea pig. And here, I really hope they do a fun little sequence of the adventures of Percy the guinea pig, just for five minutes. It doesn't have to be very long, but I think it'd be very fun. I'm sure they could cook up something good. Then they free Blackbeard's crew, who loots the island whilst they escape. They go past the Sirens, which I think is going to be a very creepy section. And they turn up at Polyphemus' island to save Grover. And considering this is almost the end game of the season, almost the final act, they definitely need to have Grover appear in more dream sequences or just straight up cutaway scenes. It's so weird to have such a key character hardly appear almost the entire season, you know what I mean? They then beat Polyphemus, they encounter Luke, they beat him again, although this time you'd want him to be trying to straight up kill them, but be, you know, upset about it, I think. Not just pure evil. Chiron then turns up, he whoops some ass, which for me, this is a necessity. Chiron needs to turn up. I need to see this old dude in the party ponies whooping some significant ass, please. They get the golden fleece to heal the tree, then we get Thalia, which, honestly, I think you have to end it there. You end it on her return, her waking up, and them hearing her voice and seeing her. Such a massive moment. And I think if you go on any longer than that moment, it's going to lose its impact. So my gut tells me they're going to end the season right there. But yeah, beyond that, I honestly just can't see them making any major cuts. The majority of the tweaks are going to be minor. After all, Sea of Monsters just is quite a short story, so they don't really need to do much. Just keep fleshing out the world, fleshing out the characters. Show a bit more of that, and it should be a banger of a season. And so yeah, with all that being said, that's the end of the video. And these have just been my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think about Percy Jackson Season 2? Do you agree with my thoughts? Maybe you have some different ideas. I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.